Alrighty, the basting is done and uh, well, almost. I ran out of thread right almost at the very end, but I figured I don't need to put another piece of thread in that. I can just start right there. So I've got two threads needle on a needle here and I'm tied, I've tied a knot and I'm going to bury the thread on the inside. This is when it works very well, you can do this. You start your whip stitch. So there's my knot going inside and just tuck that back there. And I'm gonna start going around my lovely little bear friend here and sew together his front and back. Now, if you look at the pattern, the bear has the two markers on each of his little toes here. So you wanna come around here, do your whip stitch, stop here, start again, do the inside of his legs, stop, and then start again and do up to the end here. And what I'm going to do is when I get to about part way, just part way down his leg, I'm going to stop here, I'm going to start on the other side, and I'm going to fill his arms and his upper part of his body and neck. I like to do it that way because it's a long way to go from his toe to his fingertip. And if you do it kind of in the middle here, it makes it a tiny bit easier to do. So I'm going to continue with my whip stitch and I'm going to, to stop about right here and I'll show you what to do next. All right, so I have done some of the whip stitch. I've done, I've actually got two needles going here, one on each side, and I've stitched down to about his lower abdomen. Now what I'm going to do here is remove the basting partially to about uh, just about, just just maybe about an inch below where I stopped whip stitch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to partially fill this little guy do his arms and neck and upper body and then you don't have to reach so far through the toe so I'm just gonna leave that kind of hang in there and pull this out on this side too I think this is where I actually had a knot, so I have to cut that guy out. The basting is a good, a really important step. It really helps with the accuracy of your stitching. There we go. And gets those edges right where they need to be. He's looking pretty cute, eh? He'll be even better once we put more stuffing in him. So there we go, not too well down there. So there's my stitching, my basting starts again here. So now what I'm going to do is get my skewer and my roving. And the same thing is we're going to just take the roving and we're gonna pull it apart into little bits. And we're going to open them up here and using the flat side of the skewer, the blunt end, we're going to shove that roving in there. You wanna do little pieces because we're gonna do the arms first and you don't wanna have it too much in there. Just push that in with the blunt end and we're gonna push it up and over into his arm. Now, this was, um, if we had the other pipe cleaners, you wouldn't have to do this step. Let's see, it's getting in there. There we go. There's one little tiny piece. Put another one in and keep going until his arms are full. And when I do the other arm, I'm gonna switch to the other side. easier to go across than it is to work on the same side. Push that roving in, around the pipe cleaners as best you can. And he's got a bit of a gap there still, so. Just 
take your time when you're doing this and do it right. There we go. That's nice. See how nice and puff, fluffy that arm looks now? I'm going to fill up the second arm and I'll be back to show you what to do with the neck. All right, I have both of his arms done and they're looking pretty good. You see how the stitching sort of stretches out a little bit and relaxes the seams. It's not quite as bumpy. It looks pretty good. So if you're having issues with lumps in the arms, make sure you can use the tip, pointy tip, and you can get into the arms through the leg over here and you can kind of move the roving around so that it's um, smooths it out, smooths out. So now we're going to fill up the neck and to about there, just sort of mid chest. So you need to take some more roving, do make little bits of it again here. And go in through the side here, using the blunt end of the skewer and just shoving that up around up into his neck. And again, you just need to be careful um, working around the area. Use the pointy end in here, kind of shove the, try to shove the roving up into his little neck and around the wires. Just be careful that you don't poke through your felt, but his head, look at that, it's pretty good. I'm going to put some in the back here too. He's got a bit of a chest now. <laughs> and some more here. Now I'm going to turn him over, work on the other side a little bit. They're starting to take some shape. Let's do some poking up here at the neck. Oops, just about poke through. See what I mean? It's very easy to do that. So just be careful with your skewer. Some more in there. This is where you can start personalizing your little bear a bit, right? So I'm going to just get some of that roving up around his neck. Be very careful. There we go. Now I think that's good for now. I'm going to try to shove that up there as best I can. And pull my basting tight again here on both sides. And I'm ready to continue stitching, whip stitch down to right at the toe, making sure we leave the toes open. But he's looking pretty good, I think. And I'll be back uh, when I get all of my whip stitching done. All right, my bear is uh, almost completely stitched. All that is left are his two toes, tips of his toes. I've left them open and we're going to finish stuffing him now through those two spots. So I'm going to remove the basting first, the remainder of that, which hopefully shouldn't take too much because we got rid of most of it before all the big knots and such. So take the basting out. There we go. Now, we're going to grab some roving. Hmm. Put this in really good, I guess. There we go. Oh, must have been caught up, but there we go. All right, get that out of there. So now we're going to get some roving, more of the roving, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just, as we did before, we're just going to shred this up into tiny pieces. And using the blunt end of our skewer, we're going to open one of his little toes. And we're going to start filling our little guy's legs and get that into his belly. Oh, 
once you get the roving started, it goes in pretty good. There we go. Stick that into his little tummy. And we'll get some more in there. And when we get him to a certain full this, we'll turn the skewer around and use the pointed end to smooth the and shape the roving inside. Take another piece. Let's go the other leg now. You can see the little pipe cleaners there. If you want, if you prefer, you can tie these threads off. I was just trying to huh, save time, but they seem to be getting in the way here. There we go. Shove that up there. There we go. And get that into his body. Turn this around, maybe. Kind of fiddle with it a bit to get shove it in his little tummy. You can squeeze him a bit too. But you can see how he's becoming a bit more shaping. Like you can start man like uh, manipulating his arms a little bit. Got a funny weird thing there, but I think that's that one. So should have fixed that before. I'm sure he'll be okay though. Get another piece of roving here and keep sticking that up his toe. Poor bear. If you want to have a fatter bear, kind of keep keep putting it in there. For this guy, I think I'm gonna put more in his bum area here, so he's got a bit of a tushy. the skewer around and try to maneuver that bit of roving into his bum area. All right. I'm going to fiddle with this a bit more and I'll be back. Yeah, that's pretty good. He looks pretty good. Nice and solid. Cute little belly. I'll play with him a bit more and I'll be back and we'll finish up his legs. All right, here is our bear. He is all stuffed and sewn together. Here's his little feet. A little lopsided. I had a little fun with that one. But he looks pretty good. He's quite firm and he's quite maneuverable. You can move, change, move his arms and legs around. You can kind of make him sit down. He's a little firmer than my other bear. But you can do some manipulation with his hand, his arms and stuff. So next we will start his little base. And this is where our bear will get his personality. He's going to be awesome.